Hey everyone, welcome back to Workshop Quick Takes. Today we're working on the 2000 Jeep Cherokee XJ again. And the motivation is we're getting some kind of brown looking sludge swirling up in the coolant bottle. I recently flushed it and got a, you know, like a quarter inch of mud off the bottom of the bottle. And then also when it cools down enough, we'll open up the cap here and probably see some brown swirlies coming up in there as well. So that means we need to do more than just a regular flush. We need to do a hot flush. And the way we do a hot flush is not to get menopause, but to actually get a chemical detergent agent put it in the cooling system, run it hot for a while so that it really scrubs out the inside and breaks free any deposits that are kind of in there reproducing rust. And then we can completely drain and fill it with clean material. Coming down the row over here, we have our supplies. This is the flush we're going to use. The parts store happened to have this one called Blue Devil, which is supposed to be a heavy duty one. And normally we like to use the BG products one, but I found that at Napa, I haven't found it at O'Reilly where I got this, even though O'Reilly stocks other BG products, go figure. Directions, caution, do not remove radiator cap when engine is hot. Yeah, that's good advice. Remove radiator cap, open the drain cock, and drain the cooling system. Now the drain cock down here is on the lower corner of the radiator on the passenger side. However, since we're gonna be emptying the cooling system anyway, we'll probably be loosening some hoses along the way. Collect, use antifreeze for disposal, etc. Then add the Blue Devil radiator flush and oil degreaser. Fill up the rest with clean water. Replace the radiator cap. Start the engine and run with the heater on max for 20 minutes. Now in this particular one, we don't actually have to run with the heater on max because there is no heater control valve on the uh, 9701 XJs. They remove that if you have a 96 to earlier or many other vehicles, including our 05 Honda CRV. They actually do have a shutoff valve that prevents water from going through the heater if the temperature selector inside the cabin is down on cool. For deeper radiator cleaning, drive your vehicle for one to two hours. Product can remain in the system for up to four hours. Here's the thing, when I see something like that, that tells me there's probably, I don't know, maybe a fairly strong acid in here to help purge out those uh, rust deposits. If you do not follow these instructions and just let it sit in there, say overnight, it's probably going to attack a lot of seals in your engine, such as your head gasket. So make sure when you see something like that, don't just walk away from the project and pick it up the next day. Do not let the cooling system temperature fall below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. This is not antifreeze. Flush the system thoroughly with water until all cleaner is removed. Completely drain and then refill with clean coolant. So we also have distilled water and then we just went ahead and bought 50-50 premix. These two here should pretty well fill up our system. I don't believe it takes more than two gallons from memory. And if it does, we've got a little bit of extra over in the cabinet or we'll just top off the overflow reservoir with clean water and then add more 50-50 when we get some later. There's definitely some sediment and debris down in there. So we'll be pulling the bottle out to completely empty that as part of our cleaning today. Another thing we'll be doing once we actually get the system properly flushed is removing the heater hoses there and flushing out the heater core bi-directionally, first one direction, then the other. And we'll plan to do the same thing with the radiator, upper hose here, lower hose down there. Today, I'm gonna to try and do this without removing the thermostat housing. We'll see how that goes, but there is a bypass in here that allows the heater hose to flow around, so it's not like it's completely blocked off with the thermostat closed. And then one more thing I do wanna to do today is go ahead and remove the air box. It's not that hard to do, and getting it out of the way will give us much better access to the lower cooling system hose where we're gonna be flushing anyway. And if we have to start and move the vehicle, since there are no sensors associated with this, it will start and run. If, and since we are waiting for the system to cool down a bit, let's just turn on a fan to help that along, and then we'll get on the air box. To remove this air box with the factory plastic clips here on the intake trumpet, I'm going to go ahead, just push those down. There we go. Those loosen right up. Same thing over here. And then this piece, come off of there and I can remove it off of here although I don't have to but now that's out of the way I also need to get this clear and just to keep it off of the uh, out of the way I'm going to remove that also two clips on this side one on this side and top unhinges on the back and there's the air filter the air filter comes out then finally there are two bolts here and a nut back there if we remove those this just lifts right out these here are some kind of English head, but unless they've previously been rounded off, they'll come out with a 13. Once all those are loose, this just lifts right out. Make sure you don't lose these little rubber bushings down here. They tend to go bad and get loose. And now we have exactly all the access we need to our lower radiator hose. Having done that, we can go ahead and start removing the coolant overflow bottle while we wait for the engine to continue cooling down. Although, you know what, it changed my mind. We might be exchanging uh, material out of this while the hot flush is running. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this on for now. 
Hose still feels pretty hot, but it's definitely not pressurized anymore, which means it's safe to remove the radiator cap. Even so, we'll open it slowly, make sure it doesn't start spraying at us. Nope, we're good. Yeah, it's not bad, but you can definitely see the brown kind of swirling up in there, especially if I do this. That should be nice, clean green, and it's not. So that's what we're gonna be dealing with. Now, unfortunately, the stopcock for this is located in a really terrible place, unless you're removing the bumper or the header panel, which we're not, if we can avoid it. Yeah, that's it, right there. You know what, even though I'd rather not, I think my life is gonna get better if I just go ahead and remove this plastic piece here. Okay. Pretty muddy, nasty stuff coming out of there. I've got probably about two gallons out of there. And at this point, I've gone so far as to lift the rear of the vehicle with a jack. So that tilts the engine forward a bit to try and drain out more of the water jacket. I also applied compressed air here. I didn't seal it off because obviously I don't want to blow apart the cooling system. I let plenty of air blow by, but it was enough that it started spitting a bit harder down there. And that was exactly what I was looking for because that helps just take some of the extra water out of the system. So I'm going to tighten up the stopcock again put the hot flush into the cooling system and then let it run for a bit. And I'm gonna start by putting in some of the deionized water so that the uh, flush mixes with something instead of just going in straight and hitting the bottom of whatever. I don't know what's in there, it doesn't smell like much, but I'm betting it's a lot of acid. Contact causes serious eye irritation. Keep out of reach of children. Contains hexylene glycol, huh. Note that even though the block is still fairly hot in there, this water is at room temperature and room temperature is currently about 80 Fahrenheit. So I'm not too worried about cracking anything. Okay, it's starting to sit close to the top of the radiator, but that's only about one full gallon we've put in so far. And we got not quite two gallons out of there because that's up to here on a five gallon bucket. So let's go ahead and raise the front end just to tilt the engine back. And also tilt the water jacket back. Let's start it, see if a little bit more air bubbles work out of there, especially once the thermostat opens. Warming up, still have the AC running too, which is going to help put heat through the engine as well. Well, we're just about 15 minutes now. We've hit the 210 mark, we're slowly creeping above it, and then the electric fan is coming on for longer and longer periods, so we're pretty much hitting our max stable temperature. It's been almost 25 minutes. It's parked right at 210, it's not wavering. That's a good enough time for a hot flush, and I don't have all day, so I'm gonna shut it off and then wait for it to cool down so we can drain it again. Okay, we're still waiting for the system to cool down. It's got less heat on it than it had a few minutes ago, but it's still very much pressurized. So while we're waiting on that, I think we're at the point now where we can get this out. Pretty straightforward operation. We just need to remove this hose using this hose clamp that I added on there. There's a first screw down there. There's a second screw right there. Both of those will remove with an eight millimeter head. This washer should be captive, but just in case, don't accidentally lose one. And there we go. Looking pretty muddy. You can kind of see there's still some, there's some fresh mud and sediment running around in there. Nasty stuff. If it immediately turns reddish brown again after a hot flush, you can do a second hot flush and see if that fixes it. But if it keeps turning the coolant like this, then there's a very good chance what's happening is the combustion gases are getting into the cooling system, polluting it, acidifying it, and it's breaking down seals and stuff. So we'll find out. In the meantime though, I'm just gonna go rinse this out a little bit to make sure it's clean before it goes back in. Having this out of the vehicle will make it just slightly easier to get at the heater hoses. Not a lot, but I might as well just wait to put this back in. Okay, we should be able to carefully open this now. It's not fresh, oop. Still slightly pressurized. At least it wasn't in steamy spray mode. I think we can go ahead and get ready to flush it, but we're gonna have to do it slowly because the block is still pretty hot in there. Start by pushing this out of the garage. 
Okay, I need to cool things down before I start trying to flush the block so I'm not just putting ice cold water into a hot block and risk cracking it. One thing I should do though before putting any more water in the engine bay is just make sure I don't fill up the intake here. It's still gonna be pretty hot in the down of the core there, so once I start flushing it, so I'm gonna get some hot water spurting out that I want to watch out for. But I think we're at the point now where we're not just going to crack it straight up. What size engine is that? 4.0 in line six. Nope. Yep. Well, flushing the radiator back and forth, I'm not seeing a lot of fresh stuff come out of there. I put this back on. Well, the good news is I'm not bringing out anything new. Let's try putting this pipe back on. Yeah. All right, put the hose down there so that's at the lowest level. I'll go ahead and pour some distilled water through there just to finish it off. All right, last check, we disconnect the heater core. You can either do that back there at the heater core, or I can just do these two hoses here and see what's going on. And since these do sometimes tend to stick to the heater core and you really rough up the heater core trying to pull them out back there, I'm just gonna remove them up here today, see if I can find anything interesting. Oh yeah. Yeah, a lot of sediment usually hides in the heater core. Now if I do it backwards, same thing will probably happen from this direction. All right, one more time from this direction. We'll see if anything fresh comes out this way again. Still some, but we're running pretty clear now. I don't want to leave a whole lot of tap water in the hose, so. Go ahead and pour some uh, DI in here until the light comes out. And now we're gonna do that with 50-50. Just try and make sure the heater core is sitting there full of antifreeze rather than plain water. So otherwise it will dilute the uh, antifreeze down when it's filling with the rest of the system. Okay, we're still getting water. And it's starting to turn green, close enough. And I guess we'll go ahead and put this one on too. Put the hose back up here. Reattach that there. One thing about using these screw clamp types, you don't want to super over tighten them because you can actually crack the plastic. At the same time though, they do have to be fairly tight or they will leak. Now from here, with that connection still open, I want to start pouring 50-50 in and slowly fill up the radiator here and hopefully the block at the same time with it venting there. Now if all goes well, at some point we'll be able to actually see it pop up in there. All right, we've added our first gallon and I still don't see it coming up in there, so we got a little ways to go yet. Okay, it's just starting to come up and I'm mostly seeing water in there, but it is filling. I'm gonna temporarily install this again. I'm going to try and top fill this hose. We're starting to push water out in the block. Well, that's just about two gallons. So now I need to tighten that down and then go back over here, lift the corner, top it off, and hopefully we're good to go. Okay, that one I'm not too worried about because it's on the metal. All right, cooling reservoir. <laughs> Here's a really old jug. It's just been reused though, it's not old coolant. Okay, we're going to push that right to the full line because usually there's always at least an air bubble or two that gets missed in the final burping here. And it'll suck that back in after the next heat cycle. And let's not forget these.
that's as high as we can get this corner. Let's go ahead and start it up again. Get everything bled and bubbled. Make sure there's no water seeping out down here around our uh, radiator inlet, which there might be because I didn't get the hose all the way on. Let me push that all the way up this time. That's where it's supposed to be. Okay. Hopefully we don't start losing any coolant mysteriously. So I'm pretty sure that's tight. All right, the airbox goes back in the opposite of how it came out. And then that should be it for today. I'm gonna line up that one stud right there. Air filter. And finally, intake plenum. And there it is. So now we just need to drive it for a bit, see if any more bubbles come out and whether we have to top it off. Sometimes it does, but lifting it up from the front and getting that radiator cap at the highest possible point is usually a pretty good way to get most of it. Hi everyone. Thanks for joining me on my YouTube channel again today. That was another episode of Workshop Quick Takes. Hopefully that gives you an idea of something that you can do at home in order to try and improve the maintenance schedule of your XJ or any other vehicle with an ordinary cooling system. However, we should give you a cautionary note if you have a vehicle that is producing rust and sludge in the cooling system, you might want to run an exhaust gas check on the coolant. There's a chemical test kit that can do that for you. If it comes up positive, it means you've got a bad head gasket and exhaust gases are getting into the coolant where they break it down and acidify it. And that in turn then attacks the interior of all iron surfaces. It attacks gaskets and so on and means that you have major maintenance coming up. Doing a hot flush like we did today may temporarily leave the problem, but it'll keep coming back over and over and over again. That being said, I did have one vehicle years ago where the cooling system had simply not been maintained for a very long time. And by the time I got it, it was producing sludge and rust all the time. I ran a hot flush twice in a row. And after the second time, the coolant stayed clean. So thanks for joining us again today. And we'll see you again next time, whenever that is. Has anyone seen my phone?